Hello and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 8.7. And today we're going to discuss modeling with exponential and power functions. And that means that we are going to talk about writing an exponential or power function based off of some points and seeing if a certain set of data follows either exponential curve or a power curve. So first of all, we're going to start out with exponential functions. And we probably need to know that an exponential function is y equals a b to the x. And so we're going to use two points and a system of equations to determine an exponential curve. And so we do have two things we need. We need a and b. And so if we write two equations, then we should be able to solve for our two unknowns. So here's our first two sets of points. Uh, negative 1.0625 and 232. And so one more time, I'm going to write what our exponential function is. And it tells me, write an exponential function. So I'm looking for a and b because my final answer is going to have the x and the y in it. But my ordered pairs give me an x and a y. And so if I can come then, and so from the first ordered pair, y is going to be 0 0.0625 equals a times b to the negative 1. And the other equation is going to give me 32 equals a times b squared. And so there's a few ways you can go about solving them. Um, but probably substitution is your best bet if we solve for one of the variables and then substitute it into the other equation. Uh, so let's solve, let's solve the second one for a. So if we divide by b squared, and there's not a, a hard fast rule on how you have to solve these, but let's just see what this turns out as. So if we solve this for a, and then come back over to the other one and substitute that in for a, so this is going to be 32 over b squared. And actually what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to write this as 1 over b, because that's b to the negative first. So then we get 0 0.0625 equals, if I multiply those fractions together, 32 over b cubed. All right, so multiply each side by b cubed. We're going to get 0 0.0625 b cubed equals 32. Divide by 0 0.0625. And we get b cubed equals... Oop, let me try that one more time. I get b cubed equals 512, and then we'll cube root. You know, so really putting lots of, of uh, concepts together here. And so I get b equals 8. So once we have b, I need to go back and solve for a, and probably the best way to do that is going to be to come back to here. And so this is going to be 32 over 8 squared, which is 32 over 64, which is a half. So once I have a and b, I'm going to write my function. And so my final answer is going to be y equals 1 half times 8 to the x. And there is my exponential function. All right, so I'd like to do one more like that for you, just so you, you got, make sure you got it. So remembering that our exponential function is y equals a times b to the x. We're going to write equations for both ordered pairs. So this becomes 9 equals a times b squared. And we have 20.25 equals a times b to the fourth. And you need to solve for one of those variables, and it really doesn't matter what, um, but you might find A easier to solve for since B has an exponent. Um, so let's solve the first one for A. So divide by B squared, so then we get A equals 9 over B squared. And we want to take that to the other equation and put that in for A. So this becomes 20.25 equals... 9 over b squared 
times b to the fourth, which is going to be 20.25 equals, it's going to be 9b squared, because if you use your exponent rule and you subtract those, you're going to get a b squared. So we're going to end up solving this for b, so we'll divide by 9. I'm going to switch it around. b squared equals... Two point two five, and we want to square root both sides. One point five. All right, and knowing that b has to be positive, I'm not going to put that plus or minus on that square root there. Okay, so I have b, so I can come back over to a then, and get one point five squared there. which means a equals 4, and then if I put that together as a final equation, we're going to have y equals 4 times 1.5 to the x, or you could always write y equals 4 times 3 halves to the x, either one of those there. All right, so that is writing exponential function from two points. All right, so there's going to be times that you know, somebody's collecting data and they're wanting to see is it fit an exponential curve. And so here's how you do that. And we're not going to do it um, on the video because it's a little bit time consuming and I want to walk you through it step by step. So we'll do this in class, but if you would write down the directions now. Um, so you're going to have all these ordered pairs, however many you know data points you collected. And you're actually going to plot x L and Y. So every Y you're going to take the natural log of and you're going to plot those. If this gives you a line or something really close to a line, then the points X, Y were an exponential curve. All right, and so then to go back and write that equation, that uh, exponential equation, what you do is you actually find the equation of the line set it equal to L and Y, because that's the Y that you used. You're then going to exponentiate both sides because you don't want L and Y, you just want, um, you want Y. And so you're going to, if you have one side is L and Y, you're actually going to exponentiate with E so that you just get Y on both sides, or Y on that side, and whatever the other side turns out to be. Um, and then you're going to simplify using your properties of exponents. Okay, so we will do that in class, but if you'd have all those directions written down, that would be easier to do that in class. All right, so we're going to move on now to uh, power functions. Okay, so similar to exponential, except a power function has a little different equation to it. Uh, power functions are actually y equals ax to the b. So you still are going to use two points in a system of equations, and it's going to tell you to write the equation of a power curve, uh, but this time you're looking for a and b, and b happens to be an exponent. So here's our two points, and it says write a power function that goes through these two points. So we have y equals a x to the b. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before, it's just solving it is a little different. So we got our first equation that's going to be 8 equals a, oops, yeah, a times 3 to the b, and then our second equation is 12 equals a times 9 to the b. And so we're still going to solve this, but now because you're solving for an exponent, you probably are going to have to use logarithms. Okay, so start out where we did before in terms of um, Solve for one of the variables, and a is going to be the easiest. So let's just get a by itself on this first equation. So divide by 3b, a equals 8 over 3 to the b. So if I come over to this other equation, this is going to be 12 equals 8 over 3 to the b times 9 to the b. All right, 
So we need to think about this other side because these are fractions. This is really going to be 8 times 9 to the b over 3 to the b. We can think about it like that because you're multiplying top and bottom there. And we're going to use our quotient rule for exponents. I think it's actually like power of a quotient. And the fact that usually we take that exponent to everything, but if they already have the same exponent, if you're already on this side, we can actually go back this other way. And so the fact that they both the 9 and the 3 are to the b power, we are going to actually take it back to this side and think about just this part as 9 over 3 to the b, which means we get 8 times 3 to the b. All right, so that's where we are right now. We're going to go ahead and divide by 8. So we get 12 divided by 8, which is 1.5. So we're going to come up here. 1.5 equals 3 to the, oops, to the b. All right, so I want to solve for an exponent. So if I take log base 3 of 3 to the b, I just get b. Okay? So that as I'm taking the log of both sides, and I want to do log base 3. So log base 3 of 1.5, using my change of base, is going to be log of 1.5 over log of 3. So working this out, we get uh, b, we're going to go to 3 decimals, 3.369. So now if I come back over to A, it's going to be 8 over 3 to the 0.369 power. And I think we should, I get exactly 5 and a third. It, um, I, left in, I left it the exact answer in my calculator. If you rounded it really to 0.369, you you get close to a third. You get 5.3337449. But if you leave that exact um, answer from B in your calculator, you will get exactly five and a third. So either way there. Uh, so we have our information we need. We're going to write our equation. It's going to be y equals um, a, which however you want to write it, um, five and a third, 5.333. Uh, or really, for the sake of it, 16 thirds, however you want to write that, um, times x to the b, which is your 0.369. And there is our power function. All right, so we're going to do that one more time just to make sure we got it. So remembering that our power function is ax to the b, we're going to write our two equations, so this is 2 equals a times 5 to the b, and our other one is 6 equals a times 10 to the b, and we're going to solve one of them for a, so we'll just happen to solve this first one here for a. So dividing by 5 to the b, that gives us a equals 2 over 5 to the b, and we're going to substitute that into the other equation. So we're going to get 6 equals 2 over 5 to the b times 10b. And then knowing your exponent rules, you can actually simplify that part because you're multiplying these fractions. So you get 6 equals 2 times 2 to the b. Divide by that first 2 there. You can't divide by the other 2 because it's attached to the exponent. So 2 to the b equals 3. And then to get rid of the exponent, we're going to do log base 2 of both sides, log base 2. And so that means that b equals log of 3 over log of 2. Which is 1.585. And then if I come back over to a, we're going to have a equals 2 over 5 to the 1.585, 
which gives us 0.156. Alright, so once you have A and B, Y equals 0.156 X to the 1.585. And there is your power function. Alright, so we can, uh, same, similar to with exponential functions, we can see if the points we have model a power function. And so again, you're just going to write down the directions now and we'll go over this in class. Um, but n instead of x, ln, y, this is actually ln x, ln, y. And so you're going to plot those. So if you had bunches of x's and y's, you're actually going to plot ln x, ln, y. And if that is a line, then those original points x and y do fit a power curve. All right, and so we will do that in class and take careful note to make sure you have those directions written down because um, likely after your test you'll be doing a small project on actually writing either exponential function or power function by hand for some real life data. All right, let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.